indicators be that would signal to you that this financial repression approach is m- maybe being more successful than you expect? And what would you be looking at to see the, the opposite things sort of spiraling in a different direction? That's a good question. Um, well, I, I mean, you need to see productivity pick up uh, dramatically, uh, which is always hard to measure, right? I mean, productivity is kind of one of these things, like it's like the Holy Ghost during Mass. I mean, you know, it's there, but no one sees it. It's the residual uh, term after yes. you account for all of the other things that you can count. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and I would uh, even argue, can you really count GDP in an economy that's yeah, right. 80% service oriented? I mean, I, I like when Netflix raises its price, is it inflation or is it, you know, because the catalog is bigger? I mean, I, I have all these kind of essential questions that, but anyway, I'm not going with that. So yeah, miracle increase in productivity and then also uh, increase in, in, in labor force participation. Somehow we would, you get this reserve army of worker that, that comes in. I just don't see where it's coming from. If anything, you know, we job report today participation went down uh it has been that, going down for for right. a better part of i guess two decades what do oh, you attribute prime, that to no the, the craziest chart yes is, is prime age men like if you look at prime age men in the u.s four decades you know you go from um 98 percent so prime age is like 25 to 55 you know to to i don't know now it's less Low than 60. europe yeah it, it's less than europe now for prime age men and to me, that you, then you go back to the whole issues of uh, opioids, of broken healthcare system, of um, disenfranchisement, of, of, disenfranchising of a good chunk entire, of the population. yeah, uh, the country, the, the territory itself. You know, treating eighty percent of the country as, as disposable and telling them, yeah, just learn to code and shut up. Um, I mean, this is you know four years of, of bad policies that that come, and, and and again, you add COVID on top of that. I mean, you have the obesity problem that's gotten worse, the mental health crisis has gotten worse. Uh, um, the drug problem that's gotten worse. I really don't see like there's to me there's a physical deterioration in in the in the workforce in the U.S. that that kind of puts a cap honestly on it on its growth potential. Like that's the biggest weakness that that I can think of the U.S. is the fact that it has a, an extremely unhealthy population. Would you say that that also adds uh, power to your view that in relative terms, China can still sort of surpass the U.S. in economic terms because you're seeing sort of this social malaise that keeps the U.S. economy from from reaching anywhere near its full potential? I I, I would think so. And not just sort of, like I said, physical. I mean, you know, if you look at uh, uh, 40% of the U.S. population is obese. I mean, if you look at the... the the the, the the job um, the portion of the job markets where you have the tightest are you know things that you need to be fit to do like uh, waiters uh, hospitality uh, leisure uh, or even the tr- the trucker crisis is another example like the, the the reason we can't hire truckers in the U.S. is because there's this, this um, test against marijuana uh, and, and yeah most um, you know um, it's very hard to find people who are you know clear of any drug for the past two weeks and are willing to be you know be on the road for uh, for several weeks at a time without seeing their, their families. So, um, no, I, I think it's a major issue. And yeah, the U.S. is, uh, uh, again, it's the product of, of, I mean, getting a political turn. But, like, I think we had an opportunity with COVID, uh, maybe, or even after the great financial crisis to, to kind of fix and, and redirect the system, and, and we didn't seize it.